Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue the study of the Mobius uh, function. Uh, so if you uh, forget the notation, please uh, look back at the last lecture. I will not uh, repeat everything. So we start with the following uh, example. Uh, recall that before we define the zeta function, uh, let's recall what is zeta function as follows. Uh, uh, zeta function x, y is 1 if x less than or equal to y, 0 otherwise. Okay, and uh, um, so here x, y are uh, elements of a uh, uh, partial ordered set or post set X. Okay, then note that data Y, Y is one for all Y. So the diagonal uh, non vanishing, therefore. Uh, Hence, zeta has an inverse mu, uh, which is a function in the f class, cal f class. That is, uh, it, it has non trivial uh, value only when the first variable is less than or equal to the second variable. Okay, so what does inverse mean? Inverse means uh, mu uh, convolution zeta is delta function. Okay, in particular, uh, we can write down uh, more mas in a, a mathematical form as follows. So for all uh, summation over all element of x, mu x z times zeta z y equals delta x y. And uh, uh, if we plug in the value of zeta, we can simplify it to the following form. Uh, for all summation is over all element z between x and y and the mu x z this is delta x y here uh, x is less than or equal to y and uh, in particular we have mu x x equals 1 uh, for our element o the ambient space X and uh, when X is strictly less than Y then we can compute mu X Y in the following form it's negative summation of mu X Z for all Z greater than or equal to X and uh, strictly less than Y Okay, and uh, we call such mu uh, Mobius function. Notice that in, in general, uh, without, if you assign a partial order set randomly, probably it's very hard to compute the mu. But as soon as you have very natural structure on the uh, partial order set, you will have a nice form. So first we look back the original uh, uh, example. So let's consider the uh, the other subsets of the set Xn and the partial order is given by the inclusion on the containment. And then the Mobius function.
mu is given by mu a b equals negative a uh, uh, the magnitude b and the cardinality b minus the cardinality of a and here a is a subset of b which is a subset of xn and of course uh, zero otherwise okay let's prove it so by the definition we know that mu a a is one for all a in xn and if the cardinality of b is one greater than cardinality of a and uh, a is a subset of b then uh, by this formula then by delta we have mu a b equals negative a uh, less than or equal to uh, uh, contained in c strictly contained in b mu a c and uh, notice that under this condition the summation is only uh, one possibility there's only one possibility for this case that is a is a c so so this is negative one okay now suppose a star holds so star what do we want to prove for all set uh, Carnet B minus Carnet A less than or equal to P and uh, A is a subset of B. Now consider the case when uh, the difference of Carnet is P plus 1 and uh, A is a subset of B. Then we have mu a b. We still use the uh, uh, delta. Mu a b is negative a contained in c strictly contained in b mu a c. And for mu a c, we can use uh, induction negative 1 to carnetic C minus carnetic A. This is negative K from 0 to P. And uh, uh, here we uh, we just partition the summation partition the summation into the following form depending on the carnet the difference of carnetic uh, so o, C and A. So we can write in this form uh, equals K. The difference is K. C is between A and B. Negative 1 to K's power. Okay, therefore we can uh, enumerate the number of set C satisfy uh, this condition. The sum end is always negative one to k's power. Therefore, the summation, first summation, should be negative one to k's power times the number of set of sets C. So there will be p plus one choose k. Okay, and here we record the. Uh, some kind of variation of Pascal identity. P 
plus one choose zero minus p plus one choose one plus p plus one choose two minus all the way to negative one to p plus one p plus one choose p plus one this is zero okay therefore the summation here should be uh, negative one p plus one times p plus one choose p plus one which is negative one p plus one so by induction we are done okay next let's look at the simplest uh, example or partial order set or uh, actually this is a total order set that is the linear order suppose you have n elements uh, and the order is given by one less than two less than all the way to less less than m and then by the definition mu the mobile's function mu kk should be one and the mu kl is zero for all uh, k greater than or equal to uh, l plus one okay then Look at the identity uh, summation uh, mu kj for j from k to k plus 1 is 0. Then it's equivalent to see that mu k k plus 1 is minus mu kk is negative 1. And then for k plus 2 for summation mu kj for j from k to k plus 2 equals 0, we can derive mu k k plus 2 is negative mu k k plus 1 minus mu k k. And if you plug in, you find it's 0. And similarly, we can consider summation of mu k j for j from k to k plus 3 and uh, you'll find it's also zero. And the, from this on, we always have zero. Therefore, the Mobius function uh, is given by mu k1 is one, and mu k1, so here if, if L is k, and uh, it's negative one if L is k plus one, zero otherwise. Okay, and uh, the reason why we care about uh, Mobius function, or uh, we want, or uh, we take efforts in deriving the formula, the explicit formula, is because uh, recall that last time we actually didn't didn't give the second proof for the inclusion exclusion principle. The reason is that we lack a key formula. So now we are going to prove the general formula. And uh, based on the above setting, the proof is actually very trivial. So this is the so-called Mobius inversion formula. So let x be a partial order set with uh, smallest element oh this is because l probably you need to or you can generalize to finite or to infinite uh, to the set or infinite element but if you don't want that you can just forget about that if you have a finite set you can always have a smallest element okay you don't need to care about it and the let mu be its uh, Mobius function 
and uh, recall that for any partial set, any pole set, you can uniquely determine the zeta function. Therefore, you have a uniquely determined Mobius function. Okay, and let f be a real valued function defined on x. This is what we want to compute eventually. And let g be a real value function defined by gx equals summation z less than or equal to x f z. And here for all x in x. This is what we can um, what we can easily compute. And this is uh, ultimate goal. OK, and how to go from the blue one to the green one, then The Mobius inversion formula tells you that you just uh, do the convolution of G with mu. So this is uh, Mobius inversion formula. And the proof is uh, very easy as soon as you are given the formula. We just compute the right hand side gy times mu yx. And what is g? This is z less than or equal to y fz. Uh, this is uh, actually g and uh, mu y x okay and uh, now uh, uh, let's rewrite this in the following way we we still keep the uh, y less than or equal to x and the mu y x and for the inside one We will write it as a, a convolution between f and the uh, zeta function. This will be uh, z in x, zeta, z y, f z. Okay, now you uh, change the order of summation. You first uh, sum y, sum up y, mu y x, and then sum up z. And because of the definition of the uh, Mobius function, this is actually the delta function, so delta z, y. OK, and uh, therefore, finally, by the property of delta function, this will be just uh, f, y. Oh, sorry, here it should be y, uh, zx, fx. So we are done. And a small remark is that here mu is uh, like a fundamental solution. In PDE, partial differential equation, and uh, uh, if you know a little bit uh, 
uh, physics, you know, it's a Newton potential or whatever, or Colombo potential. They are more or less the same thing mathematically. Okay, and then uh, an easy corollary is the uh, second proof of inclusion, exclusion principle. We promised to give, but we didn't uh, in the last lecture. Okay, I leave it to you. Why this is true? Uh, this is because we already know the um, Mobius function for the partial order set defined by the containment or set subsets, and uh, then you just uh, plug that into the general Mobius inverse inversion formula. Okay, since uh, it's very hard to compute the Mobius function, then uh, whenever something is hard, it will be very important. And uh, so we would like to construct mob Mobius functions. So here is a, a general way for some structure, for some uh, process with structures, actually the structure is product structure. So let x and y be two posets and uh, mu1, mu2 be the mobiles functions uh, respectively. And then we consider the Cartesian product x times y. And uh, notice that this is a set, but not a pole set yet. So, and uh, to define a pole set, we we still need to give some give the order. And we define the order less than or equal to as follows x, y less than or equal to x prime, y prime, if and only if. Uh, this, this is this is a usual notation in mathematics, means if and only if x uh, less than x prime in the order of defined on x, and y is less than or equal to y prime uh, according to the order on y. So our natural question is, uh, so we are done with the construction, and uh, I will just explain why it is a natural order, natural order on the Cartesian product. This is because, uh, recall what is the order? Order just a pair, x r1, x prime, just x, x prime, y r2, y prime, just y, y prime. So the order just a subset, the order on x just a subset or the product, Cartesian product, x and x, x cross x, r2 is a product, y cross y. Okay, and then r1 cross r2 is a subset, x cross x cross y cross y. And if you uh, interchange the order, so that will be this, so what does that mean? That means x1 cross x2 is uh, defines uh, order on x cross
cross y. Okay, and uh, then a natural question is, uh, for such uh, Cartesian product or pole sets, what's the relation between their uh, Mobius functions and actually uh, the following theory tells you that the Mobius function mu uh, is given also by the product. This is mu 1 x x prime times mu 2 y y prime. And here x y, x prime y prime uh, is an element of the Cartesian product. Okay, and the proof. Uh, Without less or generality, we can assume x y less than or equal to x prime y prime. Otherwise, um, by the definition, you can see it's both all of them are trivially zero. Okay, and then we need to prove by induction. Although the formula is quite natural, but uh, when you carry out the proof a little bit. Uh, Tautological, it's a, a little bit uh, tedious. So let's do induction on the number of pairs uh, mu uh, u v lie between x y and uh, x prime y prime. So what does that mean? That is to see uh, the cardinality of the set u v u v is greater than or equal to x y less than or equal to x y x prime y prime. So we do induction on the cardinality of such sets. Okay, and uh, if x y coincides with x prime y prime then by the definition we have x equals x prime y equals y prime therefore mu x y x y equals 1 but not therefore on the other hand, on the other hand, uh, this is one and uh, equals one times one equals mu one x x times mu two y y. So this is true when x, y equals x prime, y prime. OK, now let x, y less than x prime, y prime mu x, y x prime, y prime. Uh, we just use the uh, formula delta. Mu x, y, uh, u, v, and here x, y less than or equal to u, v, strictly less than x prime, y prime. And uh, since um, u, v is strictly less than x prime, y prime, we can apply the, uh, the assumption on mu on this part by assumption uh, 
we can write down as product mu one x u times mu two y v x y less than u v strictly less than x prime y prime. Okay, now we rewrite this product uh, in the following way. We split mu1 and uh, mu2, so there will be a negative summation x less than mu1 less than or equal to x prime mu1 x u. Sorry, uh, here is u, sorry, u. And the times summation y less than v less than or equal to y prime mu2 y v. Uh, OK. But if you compare it carefully, you will find if you do this product, you actually have an extra term. That is, here you uh, you include the case when u v equals x prime y prime, but in the above case above line you don't have that, term. so you need to cancel that one. Y y prime. Okay, now noted that by the assumption. Since x, y is different from x prime, y prime, therefore at least one of the pairs x, x prime or y, y prime is zero. Therefore, this term must be zero. And uh, oh, sorry, here is product. You have this one, so we are done by the induction. Okay, next uh, we turn to uh, the topics we started at the very beginning, the number theory. So suppose our set xn is 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to n, and uh, uh, you define it Define order on it so that it's a uh, such that it's a uh, uh, pole set. So what is the order? The order is given by the division. That is, where this division is uh, defined by. A uh, divide B if A is a factor of B. Just what we do in the usual way. And uh, then we can write down the Mobius function. This actually is very important in number theory. They use a lot when you count the uh, prime numbers or the factors of prime numbers. So when a equals b, uh, mu is 1. When b over a is an integer, moreover, it's also you assume it's a product of k distinct primes is negative 1 to k's power. Otherwise, it's 0. And uh, in particular, uh, you will find that mu AB is mu 1 B over A. It's homogeneous or degree zero. So 
if you don't want to define mu, the Mobius function for fractions, uh, you can assume here that where a is a factor of b. Okay, now let's prove it. Uh, when a is b, mu a a is one is by definition, and now we prove by induction on the number of uh, integer c between uh, a and b. Uh, I can explain a little bit more. So that means uh, a uh, divides c, c divides b. This means and Okay, if b over a, now let's prove it. If b over a is a prime, then mu a b is negative a less than c, less than or equal to c, strictly less than b mu a c. And here actually summation, for the summation, you only have one choice, that is uh, c is a, therefore it's negative 1. And uh, suppose that, uh, let's see, okay, uh, this, let's call this delta 1, this delta 2. Suppose that delta 1 and delta 2 holds for all pairs A, B, such that uh, there are K numbers, C1 to CK, between A and B. Now let A, B be a pair, such that there are k plus 1 numbers between a and b. OK, and by delta, mu a b is negative summation c greater than or equal to a, strictly less than b mu a c. And then this is uh, here by delta 1. It's, you can divide it by, divide everything by A. So it will be 1 less than or equal to C over A, less than B over A, uh, C over A, B is an integer. So that will be mu 1 c over a. Oh, I, I should uh, mention that this less than or equal to just means the division. It's the order, not the uh, usual uh, comparison of the magnitudes. Okay, and uh, of course the right hand side is mu uh, 1 b over a. So what does that mean? That means, uh, oh sorry, this should be delta 2. That means Delta two is established easily. Now let's look at uh, delta one. So let b over a b 
be a product of primes in the following way. P P1 M1 times P2 M2 times all the way to PL ML, where P1, P2, PL are distinct primes. Then what is mu1 B over A? This, uh, by this formula, By this formula, you can actually write down everything. There will be summation for T1 from 0 to M1, T2 from 0 to M2, TL from 0 to ML, mu 1, P1, T1 times P2, T2 times PL, TL. You just enumerate all the factors of B over A. Okay, then if M1, M2 to ML is 1, 1, 1, 1, then let's see how to compute this. Okay, uh, I miss uh, one condition, that is T1, T2, TL is different from M1, M2, ML, because we assume C is strictly less than B over A. C is strictly less than B. Oh, if this is true, then mu should be, uh, you just compute everything, should be uh, L choose 0 plus negative 1 to 1, L choose 1, plus negative 1 to 2, L choose 2, plus all the way to negative 1, L minus 1, L, L choose 1. You don't have L choose L because it's, uh, because you have this assumption. Okay, therefore you plug in, there will be uh, negative 1 uh, L choose L is negative 1 L okay if M1 ML is different from 1 1 1 then what do you have then the sum summation is redundant so you can have uh, this is actually uh, L choose 0 plus negative 1 L L choose 1 plus plus all the way to negative 1 L, L choose L, which is 0. We're, we're done. Uh, so I leave it to you to double check the pink line and uh, the orange line. Why this to how to s compute it explicitly? Okay, then uh, by this formula we can apply it to uh, some uh, to derive the explicit uh, Mobius inversion formula. So suppose f is a real valued function on Z plus and uh, GN is defined by summation of FK for all factor K or M then 
fn is summation mu n over k gk for all k over n. Uh, so where, uh, so here for all particle integer n, here mu n k is mu 1 n over k or mu k n. So in number theory, we usually write it as mu n over k for simplicity. And uh, for example, if we choose Euler function phi n, which is, uh, let's recall, which is the number of uh, integers between 1 and n, such that it's co-prime to n. This is uh, not easy to compute, but we know something very easy to compute. This is a summation of all phi d, where d is a factor of n. So this is noted that G N is N. Okay, then we can use Morbius inversion uh, formula to write phi n as summation mu n over d g d for all factors d over n. And if you change the variable, n over d to d, then you have summation d for all factor d or m, mu d, n over d. So this answers uh, the question we uh, raised at the very beginning of probably two lectures ago, how to write phi as a summation of n, how to derive the coefficients before it. Okay, uh, next we end up the lecture with an uh, interesting uh, example. So suppose n, k are positive integers, and uh, what is the number of uh, circular n permutations of the multiset? infinite a1, infinite a2, infinite ak. Okay, so before we uh, give, the, give the answer, we first introduce some uh, invariants. First noted that, first define the period a uh, uh, circular permutation to be the smallest positive number d such that xi equals xd plus i for all i between 1 and n. And here, uh, if d plus i less greater than n, we make the convention that xd plus i is xd plus i minus n. Make the convention that Okay. 
let's look at some examples. Suppose you have uh, four permutation a1, a2, a1, a2. Okay, and uh, you rotate once. You have a2, a1, a2, a1. You ro rotate once again. Okay, and then you see the uh, pattern repeats after two steps. So here, period D is 2. If you have A1, A1, A2, A3, then rotate once. Rotate once again. A1. A1, sorry, A2, A3, A1, A1, then next, oh, sorry, uh, should be, my bad, A1, A1, A3, A2, and A1, A1, A2, A3, so D is 4. Okay, and a uh, small lemma is a period D must be a factor. Oh, and this is not so trivial. <laughs> I leave it to you. The, the main reason is that you need to prove. Suppose you have two factors, or uh, two periods, I mean, two integers, i1 and i2, or d1 and d2, such that uh, after d1 times, you get back the original one. Uh, after d2 pairs, d2 times, you also get back to the original pattern. Then you first prove that uh, the greatest common factor, d equals d1, d, or d1 and d2, greatest uh, common factor, d, or d1 and d2, also satisfy the repeat condition. Okay, then you, you, you can prove that the period is uh, must be a factor of n because n is, n is uh, after n times, you always get back to the original pattern. Yeah, I will not repeat, but uh, uh, if you, you don't know that you can search on the uh, any elementary number theory textbook. Okay, and now let's uh, look at the original question. So solution, let Hn be the number of circular M permutations of infinite A1, infinite A2, infinite AK. And uh, let Fm uh, be the number M permutations uh, sorry uh, be the M permutations oh infinite a1 infinite a k so actually you can view it as a string Okay, now notice that uh, if an um, permutation of the multi set x1 of 
infinite a1, infinite a2, infinite ak has period d, then uh, x1, xd, x1, xd, x1, xd. Then it can be written as d, where x1 to xd repeats n over d times. So and uh, uh, and this long string, just as usual, corresponds to the actual circular permutation. In this way, you just wrap this up. And uh, you will see in uh, d different ways. So what does this mean? This means that x two, x d, x one, x two, x d, x one, x two, x d, x one correspond to the same circular permutation. And the x3 all the way to xd, x1, x2, and the last one, xd, x1, x2, xd minus 1, correspond to the same permutations. Okay, therefore you have d different ways by permuting the uh, actual useful uh, short strings. Okay, now on the other hand, uh, we can uh, partition the set of all n permutations in the following way. We partition them, we enumerate them by its orders. In other words, uh, and the number summation, okay. Summation d over n, and the number of n permutation, n circular permutations, n circular n permutations, with uh, period d. Okay, and this will be summation d over n, f d over d. And uh, recall that for all uh, Recall that the function gm defined by all the summation of fe, e divided by m, is km. This is just all the uh, all m permutations of the multisets. without any restriction. Okay, then by the uh, Mobius inversion formula, Fm can be solved in this way, mu m over e g e, and uh, which is e over m mu m e times k to e's power. Okay, and uh, uh, 
if you plug in, you will find Hn is summation d over n, f d over d is summation d over n, 1 over d, summation e over d, mu d e, k to e's power. And uh, uh, you can simplify inside one, but I will be very sloppy. Summation m over m divided by m divides e n over e one over m e. Here you change the variable, and then next you noted that actually the inside summation is just phi. And this is Euler function divided by n, k to e's power. Okay, and uh, so we are done. Yeah, actually, this is a proof. Uh, a remark is, this is the proof given in your textbook can you find some error in the proof okay I guess there are some uh, some gap yeah anyhow I will stop here uh, next time we will turn to the Fibonacci uh, sequence and how to uh, solve the linear uh, recursion relations. Okay, thank you.